Welcome to Tone Clowners. My name is Ben Craven, a cinematic progressive rock artist from Australia who's keeping the spirit of the 70s alive with an injection of 21st century film soundtrack music. That's not why we're here. Recently, I posted a video about the Line 6 Pod Go and one of the issues I was having where the guitar was just losing all its top sparkle uh, being plugged into the Pod Go versus if it went via a buffer first, which led me to believe that the input impedance of the Pod Go was not one mega ohm as stated. So there's sonic evidence in that video, but that's not enough. I've got to give some numbers now. And I'm going to run you through an experiment which I suspect no one has actually done, which is to try to calculate the input impedance of the Pod Go. Try to explain why the top end of a passive guitar is all rolled off when it goes in there. So this is going to be long and boring, and I'm a lazy, lazy person, so I've actually used this web page to calculate the impedance. So as I show in the video to come, I've got a, a signal generator putting out one kilohertz. It's going into a basic voltage divider circuit like this. I've got a one mega ohm resistor here. And this is where the pedal or the pod goes being placed. And by measuring the voltage across the load versus the voltage here at the top of the circuit, we can calculate what this, this load is here. So long and boring, my apologies, but look, I can give you the findings right now so you don't even have to watch the rest. Using the basic setup and tools that I had, my measurement of the impedance of the TU2 was 1.4 mega ohms, which is a little bit higher than the one mega ohms it stated. So there could be variances in my my circuit or equipment. Uh, likewise, the uh, MXO micro chorus, 1.4 mega ohms. At a PV amp, the bench amp I was going into, that actually was one and a half mega ohms. For good fun, I tested the input impedance of a big muff, which came back at 92 kilo ohms, which is no surprise really. They're rated about 100k. And after all that, the impedance of the pod go came out as 360 kilo ohms, 0.36 mega ohms, a long way off the one mega ohm that it's advertised at and definitely an explanation for the, uh, the sound issues I've experienced. So here it is, you've been warned. Some basic housekeeping here. I don't have a function generator, but I've got one on this tablet. It's putting out one kilohertz. As for the amplitude, well, I've got that up here on the crow. We've got 0.1 volts per division. And that is about 6.2 divisions, I reckon. Divide that by root two, divide by two again. Doing the calculations I just did, it was about 0.219 volts RMS. Now we could prove that and the AC setting on the multimeter Pretty close, 0.226 volts RMS, because it's AC. That's our baseline. I have here a very, very simple input circuit to calculate the input impedance of whatever I connect up to this. It's basically uh, a one mega ohm resistor, and that's going to act as a voltage divider with whatever we connect in series after it. We'll measure the voltage in the middle of the circuit, and from then on we'll be able to calculate the impedance of that second load. Simple voltage divider equations, I don't need to explain this to anyone. Basically what we're looking for is if the input impedance of whatever pedal we choose is uh, about one mega ohm, then we should get a drop of about 50% of the voltage from the input. So that 0.22 uh, volts 
that should go down to about half if the input impedance is one mega ohm. If it's lower, that voltage will be less. If it's higher, the voltage will be higher. And then we'll plug it into the equations and see what's going on. So right now, we've plugged in the uh, TU2. You can see here the, uh, the input waveform. And let's have a look at the waveform across the pedal. So there it is, it's gone down about half. Um, but I'll measure that on the multimeter on RMSAC. I have to disconnect the crow because that itself has an input impedance of one mega ohm, which would load things. So multimeter gives us 0 0.133, 134. So According to this circuit, the input impedance of the TU2 is... Okay, let's do the micro chorus, just because it's here. Micro chorus is hooked up. Here's our input. Let's check our output. There's our output. Again, it's jumped down about roughly half. Let's check that on the multimeter. Again, 0.13. 0.132 volts and the calculator says next up let's do a bit of a control with my trusty PV Rave, uh, Rage 158 amp all right that's plugged in uh, switch it on well there's the tone one kilohertz input there we go. Output. Now, um, the pod go. Let's give that a go. All right, we're plugged into the pod go. And the voltage reading across that. Right, we're getting about 60 millivolts. So this suggests that the input impedance of the pod go is, which would explain the, uh, the loss of top end that I get plugging into the pod go versus uh, plugging directly to an amp or plugging in via a buffer to the pod go versus not using a buffer. I'll show you an interesting thing though. If you switch that off, the uh, impedance, it's pretty much grounded at this point, which suggests to me that the input impedance in the pod go could be software controlled, it could be firmware controlled. It's not just a basic hardware input there. I'm gonna turn that back on to see what we get, uh, but also wanna show you the, uh, the Firmware version, which 130. Okay, just for fun, because I've got the setup, Big Muff Pi. These are known to have an input impedance of about 100 kilohertz, which means you don't want transparent tones out of your Big Muff, but let's give it a go. So this is the Big Muff hooked up. Let's just show those input waveforms. All right, so that's going into the uh, circuit that's coming out of our function generator. And that's what's across the, uh, the big muff. So look, no surprise there. Doing an actual reading of the voltage. There you go. 0 0.019 versus uh, what's going in again. Is that 225? Crunching the numbers, the uh, input impedance of the Big Muff is... You're not looking for a transparent tone with your Big Muff. So, look, this is hopefully explaining why in this particular pod go, uh, I am experiencing a tone loss, a high frequency loss uh, across the input of a passive guitar. That's, uh, again, not proceeding with a, with a buffer. 
Hope it's been illuminating. We'll talk to you soon.